Hi, my name is Chad Adams. I work with Skelton Key in St. Louis, Missouri. And today we're going to do a movie on scripted looping finds and why you'd want to use them. There are times when you don't want to clutter the graph any more than you have to. And so one way to do that is to move the logic from the graph into your scripts. So let's take a look at the function we're going to replicate. If we uh, add some names to our names define field here, which is just a global field, Adams, Smith, Jones, and we do a go to related record, which is simply doing uh, you know, a go to related record step here. Then we end up with a list of everybody who has the last name Adams, Jones, or Smith. And we can see on the graph that we're simply just doing names defined to the last name, a straight relationship. Okay? But there's times when you don't want to clutter the graph or you don't already have that relationship established, and so you need to put that in scripts for whatever reason. So first let's take a look at these two um, buttons here, the first go to related record and the finding loop script, and make sure they're getting the same results. So go to related record, we get 65 records, and for finding loop, we get 65 records, and if I were to change this and add in some more people, white, green, um, rose, and do the finding loop, we now have 89 records, and the go to related record, 89 records. Okay. So let's take a look at this script and see what it's doing. Pause the video if you'd like to explore how this script works in more detail. So let's take a look at that with debugger on and see what it looks like. I'll run the script. I'm just going to fast forward all the way down to this breakpoint so we can see how we build the find request. You can see at this point we've looped through and we've created six find requests, one for each name in our value list, or our list of names rather. And if I continue, I get the full name set that I was looking for. So I've been kind of ignoring this button on the bottom that says better. Let's take a look at this uh, script and why I think it's better. Um, in this one, I've kind of standardized the looping part of this so that you can recall it and use it for any field you want. So if we look at this um, script, it's basically the same as the one we were just looking at. We grab the field names into a variable, we grab the search criteria, which I'm just passing as parameters here. And in this case, I'm just using a, uh, a carriage return delimited um, script parameter because that way it will copy and paste into your own solution and uh, you don't have to worry about named pairs or anything of that nature. So we're grabbing the, the variables here, going to find mode. I'm using the set field by name um, function or step to, to set the particular field that I pass it in the parameter and we're doing the exact same thing. The only difference from, from this uh, ver script versus the first one is that my calling script needs to um, go to the right um, the right layout for me. So let's look at what that looks like when it's ran. We'll use script debugger. <clears throat> so I, in this case I've got a calling script that grabs my my list of names, goes to the right layout, and then calls my uh, my standardized script for me. You'll see if I step through this how it just does the same thing as before. The reason why I think that it could be better is because of this. I could come in here and do things like chad John, Sam, Ted, and then I could change my calling script, which is this one here, and tell it, um, instead of calling, let's pull this into the screen so you can see it, instead of calling uh, the last name here, I could change this to the first name, first, <clears throat> that's all that I've changed, is that parameter, my calling script, and now if we run this with debugger on, and we step through it. When you get to right here, you'll see that it starts setting the first name, and it's build my find request in the first name field and not the last name field. So that's what's neat about that is that you can uh, utilize the script in multiple ways without adding even more table occurrences to your to your graph. I hope you found this technique useful. Sometimes you just need to do a go-to related record, but sometimes you need to not clutter the graph, and so this is a technique you can use in those situations. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email me at chad.adams.skeltonkey.com.